morning everyone. So this morning I have a few tasks. Uh, I've been noticing that on my um, Japanese lilies, they have pods that have um, matured, the flowering pods, and they've been releasing the little seeds everywhere. Um, so, sorry about that. So here are some more pods. So what, and if you look inside here, let me try to make it clearer. Okay, there we go. So if you look inside, there are a bunch of little brown seeds in this pod. Um, and to not um, lose them as I'm harvesting the pod, I'm just going to put my envelope around the pod and then pull off the whole pod and collect all the seeds and the pods all at once because these pods have broke, op have broke up open and I don't want all the seeds to come out and I'm going to share those seeds with uh, friends and family so that they can have lots of um, pretty uh, lilies. Now if you know anything about lilies, this is a pretty big plant. This is a pretty mature plant and I didn't water it that much this um, summer um, as I was watering all my other stuff and when I saw that it was going a little bit brown I started watering it but it's got about 20 pods here and I'm going to collect the seeds from it but another way of propagating uh, Japanese lilies which they're really pretty they're white with uh, purple and yellow accents um, is by division so you can literally stick a shovel in the middle there or um, or whatnot or pull up the whole plant and then pull um, pull it apart um, uh, it has like forms or bulbs underneath so you can have easily from this big plant you can have four plants or two plants um, but I'm going to try for the first time collecting these seeds and seeing what comes from it in the, in the spring. So I'm going to sow the seeds afterwards. Um, maybe it produces, it does this, it produces these pots every year, but this is the first time I'm going to collect them. So here we go. So the seeds here are angular, brown, um, they have like sides. They have like little sides, almost triangular um, edges, and these fell out of the pod. So I'm going to stick them in the pouch, and I have another uh, Japanese lily in the front yard, and I'm going to pluck the seeds from that as well. And I'm going to try to figure out where to grow some of them, uh, maybe in some pots or something, so that I can see them develop. Another thing I wanted to show you is my avocados that I picked about a week and a half, two weeks ago. They are starting to brown, as you can see over here. There's some green still left over, and there are a couple that are still fairly green, but it's starting to soften up a little bit. But this guy's not ready, but the rest of these are ready. The ones that are all dark all around and they've all, they have a little give, so they're ripe. And we're gonna make some um, guacamole and um, desserts out of them, because you can. Um, in Asian culture, you can make um, avocado shakes, or you can make ice cream with avocado. It's got that creaminess that it um, lends, and, or you can just make avocado toast, all kinds of stuff put it on your sandwiches um, so here I have more avocados so what happens is while this is sitting on the counter as it's ripening when it starts to turn um, color change colors then I pick some more so that they can sit on the counter and ripen and um, then I'll, I'll just keep doing that, harvesting them since we have a really nice bumper crop this year. And um, so here, I don't know if you notice, I have two varieties of avocados. I have this long variety, which I don't know if it's Forte because I bought the avocado from Costco and it said Haas Avocado. 
Hello everyone. I wanted to show you um, my recent Christmas present um, I got from my mother-in-law. It is this pure pollination made in the USA naturally open pollinated chemical free heirloom vegetable kit 40 seed packets in this big packet here you get 40 seed packets and they're all non-gmo heirloom non-hybrid seeds um, and here are all the stats on it pure pollination and here are all the different kinds of seeds you get so you'll get arugula asparagus beans beet broccoli alphabetized here as you can see so there are 40 I counted there are 40 types of plants here some flowers such as sunflower but most of them are edible uh, things in this sunflowers are edible the seeds or you can grow it to feed your chickens and um, you know this with the things that have been going on with uh, supply chain and also the pandemic it doesn't hurt to have extra seeds and it comes fully sealed and so it was ordered it was gifted to me um, by my mother-in-law and it's 16,500 seeds and 40 pack so that comes out to about 412 seeds per pack of course they probably just um, do it by weight and it was $35 and it's a good thing to have for when you want to grow your own food and eat safe chemical free um, type of foods and know that these will always be available for you to grow so what happens is um, I have seeds already for different vegetables and herbs and stuff like that but I wanted a backup supply in case things go south you know how there are preppers and everything um, my basil's dying there so sad it's been really cold and it rained yesterday I mean all day and all night the night before so um, we got quite a bit of water thank goodness but still not enough to rectify several years of drought and we, we managed to um, get some of the water into our troughs and into our cisterns um, we I calculated between last month's rain which was only once and the rain yesterday we got about uh, a thousand and fifty gallons of water plus or minus several gallons um, several tens of gallons um, so and that is not including all the water that seeped into the the garden beds and into the soil and got absorbed into the plants the fruit trees and that are absorbed underneath all this mulch which are still sitting there because although some of these parts have looked dry because the sun's been hitting it and in the morning you could see like some of the water evaporating you can see that some shady areas um, are still very very wet so um, I got a lot of water yesterday so back to the seeds here I'm sorry um, I plan on freezing this in the freezer it's already sealed and tight and um, it'll keep it usable for years to come so you know when I run out of the seeds I can start using this and then order another packet or something um, and it's a great gift item so in case you want to um, get it as a gift for a special gardener in your life there it is purepollination.com and it's just a wonderful thing to have let me show you my worm bin so my worm bin has all kinds of things newspapers tissue napkins that we uh, wipe our mouths with banana peels egg shells rotten orange there citrus um, lemon um, 
cardboard, newspaper, cardboard, um, all kinds of stuff, tea bags, um, all kinds of stuff, avocado uh, skins. Um, so what happened was I knew it was going to rain, so I stuck the lid on like so, upside down inverted. Uh, nothing can get into it, but it held quite a bit of water probably two gallons and then I just dumped it all all that wonderful pure rainwater natural water soft water into the worm bin and it's nice and moist and things will break down a lot faster and what I did is I kept the chicken coop closed so they could have a nice sanctuary to stay warm because it got really cold it, was like down to 41 or 43 degrees here I had the worm tea and I emptied it out and now I just have lots of cardboard and and um, paper products so I'm gonna transfer all the um, worm bin contents and the worms over to here sift them into here then I can collect the worm castings and it will be um, used into my garden beds and such. So another thing I'm doing is collecting all these um, paper uh, wrap from you know Amazon orders and the Amazon boxes as well and what I'm going to do is because it's going to get so cold tonight the night after the rain and the night after that are going to be extremely cold almost frozen so I'm gonna take these to um, kind of warm my keep my plants warm insulated because I didn't really set up um, plastic like I did last year so I waited till it got kind of dark right now and I'm just gonna throw this on top of the bed I mean I'm sure the winds gonna take pull it away but it uh, we'll see if there's any wind tonight but at least it'll get some insulation for a bit. So, I'm gonna do that with all my garden beds. Give them just a little extra layer. Um, let's see, some of my plants. I'm sure this basil's gonzo, but let's just see what we can save. Sorry, I need two hands to to do this, but and there's some extra rainwater I collected tomorrow. In the next few days, I'm gonna start to empty out everything into appropriate places so that they can grow well. Okay. These are not too frost sensitive plants, I don't think. <gasps> My purple basil died. <sighs> Quite sad. Okay. So, I have some peppers that are doing okay, so we'll see how they are after a couple more days. Um, it's awfully cold. That is why I have all these plants surrounding my peppers, these potted plants, to kind of keep them safe and warm here, protected. So, so with the cardboard box, I'm going to open it up and let me show you what I, what I, I learned this trick from my mom. She just simply take some cardboard and she just puts it kind of around some of her plants like basil and that's why her basil plant lives year after year she doesn't have to grow a new one a new plant or buy buy it so that's what I plan on doing um, just a moment so this is what she does she just takes cardboard and kind of puts it near the roots. She 
she places the cardboard near the base of the frost sensitive plants and it kind of gives him a little bit of wind protection.